North American Egg Spotlight. I'm Chrissy Wozniak. How often do you choose one brand over another, whether it's a truck, a computer, or even your cell phone, and nothing is compatible with the previous or the next brand that you're going to purchase, and you have to buy all new accessories again, figure out workarounds. Uh, well, my guest today faces these types of concerns on a very different level in the farm equipment electronics industry. Imagine a world where machinery electronics all spoke the same language. Does that sound amazing? That's the world that he's working toward with his colleagues. Today, I'd like to welcome the Deputy of Marketing and Communications for the AEF and the Business Development Manager for Powell Electronics, Ryan Milligan. Welcome, Ryan, and thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, Chrissy, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So first of all, can you just tell me a bit about yourself and your background? Sure. Uh, I'm business development manager for a company called Powell Electronics, and my focus is on the connectivity of agricultural machines and industrial and heavy vehicles, off-road vehicles. Yeah, that's awesome. And implementing international electronic standard, standards is a cornerstone of what AEF does. So can you tell me about AEF and why it was started? Absolutely. So AEF stands for the Agricultural Industry Electronics Foundation. And that is the world we live in, is agricultural machinery electronic systems. To give a little background, in the late 90s, there was an international standard for ag machinery electronics released. And as we worked into the 2000s, and many of these OEMs had adopted this standard and were starting to use it. But what was happening was each of the different brands of machinery had interpreted the standard differently. So there was a lot of confusion uh, by the consumer. There was a lot of redundancy as far as these electronic systems were uh, going and being implemented into the machines. In a lot of cases, uh, there was many different displays and user interfaces needed in one tractor cab. So this is why the AEF was formed. The standard was released, but the global industry leaders got together and said, we need an organization that is a round table for us to discuss this topic and really come down to agree on one system, one particular set of connectors and electronics architecture that can be used. And the end result of this would be a reduction in the need for electronics redundancy and one display in the cab that would be required and interoperability between the brands of machinery. So the AEF got together to uh, solve that problem first, but then as it continued its work, it started to branch out into other precision ag functionalities. Yeah, that's, that is, it's really very inspiring. Um, and then what is ISOBUS and why is that so important? I-S-O-B-U-S. So this one common standard architecture that the AEF agreed on was branded ISOBUS. And this is an internationally standardized communication protocol. They use uh, CAN bus, which is a controller network of, uh, of electronics that can be standardized for the uh, whole of the industry to agree on. And so that is what ISOBUS is. The AEF has released these guidelines and these protocols for an internationally standardized CAN bus, ISO bus. Right, and, and who, who is um, on board with this? So when you talk about uh, the members, our core member companies are the top eight global tractor manufacturers. So you can imagine it's, it's John Deere, uh, all of the Case New Holland brands, all of the Agco brands, uh, oh. Kubota. So the, the leaders of the industry got together to work, uh, as well as three trade associations that they participate in. Wow, that that's incredible to get that much buy-in. That, that is really great. Yeah. And what is the conformance test? So ISOBUS is this common architecture and electronics uh, communication protocol that can be tested. And so that's what the conformance test is. Okay. As, an a, as an AEF member, you would submit your machinery electronics to one of our five test laboratories for this conformance test, and your machine then becomes ISOBUS certified. The idea behind that is when you plug two machines of different brands together that are ISOBUS certified, 
that they're going to work in a plug and play situation. Yeah, that's really amazing. And the AEF recently held a plug fest at Commodity Classic. Um, that's where I met you guys. So yeah. can you tell me about that? It was really exciting. Yeah, the plug fest is the opportunity for the AEF members to get together and test their equipment as a group. So it's a really unique industry uh, situation where you have competitive companies working together in an engineering capacity. So there were 49 different participants this year and they're made up of servers and clients. And in a standard situation, the servers are, we'll call it a tractor. The clients can be the toad implement or an aftermarket device that, that goes onto the tractor. And so you have um, you know, a development piece of this where if these equipment makers are developing a new piece of equipment, they would come to PlugFest to do this work ahead of the conformance test to make sure everything's going as planned. Or you can do it as a continuous improvement where you want to test a specific combination of your server with a certain client, your tractor with a certain device, you would come to PlugFest to, to make those connections and, and have the opportunity to meet with this other organization and work with them. Yeah, yeah, that was that was really neat to see live as that's happening around us there. Uh, and what I've been seeing over the last few years, especially in the ag tech world, you know, going to Fear USA and and seeing a lot of this up and coming uh, uh, equipment in agriculture, there's a real progression from the traditional manufacturer's stance of hiding and protecting your secrets um, to this more open and cooperative environment. So how do you see this all progressing? Will it continue in this open way? Or do you think there'll be some, some going back to the way it was? So there's definitely still the opportunity for uh, the different brands and equipment makers to set themselves apart. Mm -hmm. But I do see continued work happening. And it's even going to expand outside of the agricultural industry. Uh, for instance, there is a high speed system in development. And that system is going to allow for real-time video from 360 degrees around the vehicle and that is going to be a new system that's testable and there's going to be new functionalities that come out of that uh, above and beyond what isobus already accomplishes right and and just being in that room at commodity classic filled with all of these engineers talking sharing working together on all sorts of equipment as you said before it was it was refreshing to see it what was the, the feedback from those engineers? It's always been very good feedback this year in particular uh, because of the number of tests that we had accomplished. And it's a productive three days. You know, we, you've got three days of continual testing and 474 different combinations on the table. Wow. So everyone really, you know, feels that it's a unique opportunity for them to come and do that. Yeah, I guess. And the main goal, though, is to assist farmers in their day to day lives with their with their equipment. Uh, what else does AEF offer to farmers? So the after the AEF solved this problem of uh, too many displays and too many different electronic systems with universal terminal, they mm -hmm. then got to work on additional functionalities. So these would be very valuable to the farmer. It's things like uh, functionality called task controller geo where the gps data is combined with job data from the machines to create a map of let's say yield year over year it's very valuable information when it's tied to gps uh, there's also task controller section control so if you don't want to duplicate spraying a, a section of a field that's already been sprayed this allows you to turn off certain sections of the implement and not overlap with either a spraying or planning situation. And so that's a very efficient practice and, and is something that the farmers definitely take advantage of. Right, and, and are the resources, is there a cost to the resources? Are they free? So for the farmers, this is all free. This is all, right. you know, it, the AEF's focus is on the user experience. And so from our perspective, there was no need to charge the farmers for this. Our member companies pay an annual fee to be part of our organization, and that's how we uh, fund it. There's no cost to the to the end users, and these functionalities are supported on the goodwill of our members. 
Well, that's remarkable. And what kind of tech do you think farmers can expect in the future? So there's definitely this high speed system coming. It's going to allow for not only uh, you know, an increased level of video around the machinery, but it's going to really take precision to a, a exponentially smaller level. Instead of a whole section of an implement can, that can be controlled, it's going to come down to a nozzle, a single, uh, a single nozzle on a machine that can be controlled individually. That is a level of precision that exceeds anything in any industry right now when it comes to uh, construction, forestry, mining, things like that. So this high speed system is going to uh, be uh, developed over the next couple of years and you'll start seeing that uh, with video camera systems coming out. Amazing. And, you know, our, the goal has been in agriculture to feed more people with fewer resources, more efficiency, fewer dollars, fewer chemicals, fewer, you know, taking care of the earth. How far along that are we? Is there a lot more to go? It feels like we're there, right? This this is the tech that's going to make that a reality. You know, wow. the, the, the ISO bus right now is a very efficient uh, system. The high speed ISO bus is a you know is our path to autonomy so it's automating a lot of processes it's getting us close to autonomous vehicles we're considering uh, electrification part of this as an organization as well so you have a more sustainable energy source being considered too wow and is there anything that producers can do to help them with the interoperability on their own farms yeah i think one of the key key things for a producer to look at would be the aef Isobus database. It's a free app in Android or Apple, mm -hmm. and it is a way to do what we call a compatibility check. So there's uh, the tool to go in and, and let's say you highlight your tractor model and you want to consider buying uh, an implement of, of XYZ brand, you can check on there to make sure that those precision functions that you want are compatible between the two. So that's not only neat when you're making some buying decisions, but it can be fun just to play around with and see what's compatible with what. And I think the pursuit of ISOBUS certified machinery from the producers is a, is a real uh, you know, return on investment for them. Yeah, for sure. And I have one last question for you. Why do you serve the ag industry? What's your greatest passion? And really, what is, how does Powell um, also fit into all of this? So Powell has been around for 70 years, and we uh, were primarily a military and aerospace and defense uh, connector manufacturer wow. until about the 80s when we uh, partnered with Caterpillar and we started doing some assemblies for Caterpillar. And so we've grown from there to move into this uh, world of agricultural electronics. And my mentor uh, was on the original teams in the early 2000s who designed the breakaway connectors you find on the back of tractors and the implement plugs that plug into them. So I found it extremely interesting uh, system and uh, seeing that the industry was standardizing on this standardized CAN bus was very interesting to me because of what it unlocked. Uh, I really do enjoy the sustainability message that's here. And the things that are going to be achieved by everyone coming together on one system and, and the efficiency that can be used to directly affect the inputs that are going into the, into the field, uh, how that affects the watershed, how that affects the time of uh, the motors are running on the vehicles and, and the carbon footprint as a whole. Yeah, that, that's awesome. So where can people find more information? So aef-online.org is the complete uh, website of our uh, organization. And then you can go into the database that's on there as well, the AEF database. There's lots of tools in there that may be interesting for the farmers uh, besides the compatibility check. There's something called task validator. And that is a, not to go into the details of the file formatting of the data, but that's a place where they can solve some problems too, if they have any issues. Great. And when's the next plug fest? The next one is in the fall. It's in France. We have them wow. twice a year. One is in Europe and one is in North America. And so that one in Europe uh, is going to be in Antibes, France in September. Awesome. That would be a fun one to go to. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Do you get to go to that one too? Uh, well, I'm planning on it this year. Yeah. 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 Oh, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ryan, for joining me today. Great information and, and a great mission. 
that you're part of. Well, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. And thanks to all who are watching or listening. If you want to learn more, the links are provided in the show notes. And I would love it if you would subscribe to NorthAmericanAg.com or to North American Ag Spotlight, Spotlight on YouTube, Rumble, Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And we always appreciate likes, comments, and shares and have a great day.